I'm actually going to uh, debate a little bit, but, but also kind of broaden my talk because uh, having been at this for a long time, the one thing I'm 100% sure of is if you don't want to do laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, no data, no talk, no nothing is going to get you to overcome that learning curve. Um, so I'm not going to try and convince you one is better than the other. Interestingly, I, I, my personal bias is to do most hernias laparoscopically just because I feel like I've been trained to do it and, and I feel like I can do it well. Um, but I also think that the data is clear. Less than 20% of inguinal hernias in this country are done laparoscopically, period. It, it's never really changed, actually. Um, so it's a hard operation to learn. Most people can't overcome that learning curve, and those 250 cases are probably real. So um, if you are sitting out there and you're wondering if, if he's going to convince you to do a lap inguinal, there's no chance that's going to happen, and it probably shouldn't. So if you're one of those people, what I would prefer to say, and if you're a lap inguinal person, that doesn't do a lot of open inguinals, I'd rather focus on if you choose open, what's the best way to do that operation? And I'll use that to take kind of shots at Sammy a little bit about, um, uh, about why open is still better. Uh, again, these won't be relevant for this talk. So as Sam showed you, it's a common operation. Um, and uh, that means a lot of people can get hurt uh, by people overcoming the learning curve. So those numbers are staggering when you really think about it. And in skilled surgeon's hands, uh, recurrence rate, no matter what, is probably about 2%. And significant life-altering pain is probably about 6 to 8%. And to me, those are the two areas to focus on, whether you do it lap or whether you do it open. And to me, I think trying to get all those down, and it will never be zero, but less than about a percent, half a percent or so, is really critical. So I'm going to focus on that for open, and I think that that will never be able to be achieved laparoscopically uh, by people who are just out in the real world trying to learn how to fix hernias. And I actually agree there are flaws to that New England Journal of Medicine trial that Sam showed. But what that trial did show, what I think it was uh, unequivocally a, an advance for, is it was one of the first hernia trials done not by the world's experts. It was real world people in the VA who do way more than just hernias. And I think that 250 cases is, is real for, for those type of people. So I'm going to go over five things. I'll go through them kind of one at a time, particularly in open surgery, how to reduce uh, chronic pain with neuroanatomy, how to do local anesthesia, some of the key technical complications to avoid. I'm going to focus more on flat mesh. I think it'd be worth the robot for Sammy uh, if he um, would stop doing plug-in patches. I'm going to focus on that. Um, and uh, we'll also talk.